So I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't really believe any of that stuff. But then you get movies like this. And you get TV shows. And you get books about government organizations. About secret government projects. Secret. Just secrets upon secrets. Things that normal citizens like us just don't know anything about. And it does kind of raise the question at times. What is the likelihood that there's something that we don't know? What is the likelihood that the government is keeping things from us? Well, I'm sure there's some things they're keeping from us, like some budget stuff or some talks with other governments. But that stuff, for the most part, is pretty harmless. I said for the most part. But things like this movie brings up that, or like I said, TV shows or books, that's like, sometimes you're like, okay, this makes for a good story. But how much of a story is it? That's just something this movie brought out in me. And I, <laughs> it's weird. Cause like I said, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but once you get to a certain degree and once the world is saturated with certain ideas, you can't help but start to wonder. And also, you're a total idiot to come between parents and their cubs. Because a good parent will fight for their cubs. And vice versa. Cubs, for the most part, will fight for their parents, unless they really don't care. But you have to be a very special kind of stupid, in my opinion, to come between a family in any way, a strong family. So with all that cheerful stuff out of the way, welcome to Unedited Reviews. This is Firestarter. Before I get into the main part of this review, I want to mention a little bit about my non-existent history with Firestarter. I never read the original novel. I never saw the original film. All I saw was one of the trailers. And I have to say, if you don't know anything about this film, the trailers do a really good job of hiding a lot. So I'm going to do my best not to reveal too much or not to reveal anything that could be considered a big spoiler for the film. With that being said, let's look at the performers or the actors in this film, starting with Zac Efron. Man, Zac Efron has come a long way since his high school musical days. And yes, I did watch those films and I do enjoy them, even though it's been quite a while since I've watched them. They're just fun and that's what I wish high school was like. Anyway, not talking about those. But he's definitely grown. He was great in The Greatest Showman. He was good in Baywatch. I admit that was entertaining. But he's just done a lot of stuff. He hasn't he hasn't found his niche as in he hasn't stuck to just comedy or just drama. But of the movies I've seen him in, this is definitely a role like... I don't think I've seen him in before. Just the... I don't know, just... There's drama there, but just the darkness inside. The passion he feels for his daughter. The caring he puts out there and just shows how much he cares about her. It's almost like a dark, twisted kind of version of a father. But... It's a father who still truly does care about his family, his daughter, and just wants to protect them. I really can't find the exact words to describe it, but it's just, there's so much passion behind what he does here. You can tell that he's scared. You can tell that he can snap at a moment's notice, 
which he might actually do. But you also see just the love and the worry that he has about bad people learning about his daughter and taking her away. You see that he really does care about his entire family and just wants to protect them. And even though things are definitely different and this isn't your typical normal family, they have normal emotions because he makes mistakes. There's things he probably should have done that he didn't. There's probably things he says that he shouldn't have said, you know, but there are things we always say as humans. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. All our parents did, all our parents have. When we become parents at some point, we'll make the same mistakes. And I like seeing that in this type of movie, in this horror, suspense, thriller, whatever you want to call it, type of genre, that we still get that sense of humanity from Zach's character and from Sydney Lemon. I think that's how you say her name. Again, I am never good with performers' names for the most part, who plays his wife. She's his opposite in how she thinks maybe they should have been raising their daughter at times. But you can see they both truly do love each other and they care about each other. And their world revolves around their daughter, Charlie. And all they want to do is protect her. This is, this is a normal family just with extraordinary circumstances. Which leads me to Ryan Armstrong, who plays their daughter, Charlie, in this film. She is fantastic. She nails it. She's, she's creepy when she needs to be. She's, the, you can believe she's just this scared little girl when she needs to be. Every emotion under the sun, she portrays fantastically. Like I said, whether it's the fact that she's scared. And she being scared for her own life. She can be scared for her families. Or whether it's this idea of bravery and commitment. Or anger or fury. Or just every emotion under the sun. Like I said, she exhibits. And it's great. And there are times where it's like, you're rooting for her. But at the same point, you're like, oh my gosh, this girl is scaring the crap out of me. And I've seen the way her life is, but man, if I met her in a dark alley, I'd run the other way. I mean, I might even report it. You know, that's what you'd think. So with between her and the family, it does do a good balance of showing this is just a normal family. There's nothing special to see here. But yet you get to see the opposite side too. Now, yes, it does lean heavily into the feel compassion for these people. Be on their side. We want you to root for them. There's plenty of that. But there are moments when you see the government come in. And you see people like the new head of the department that's the main focus of this movie pay, played by Gloria Rubin from the very beginning yeah I hated her but she also has this way of being like just playing very peacefully you kind of see the wheels turning in her head you can see oh wait is she manipulating or is she being honest you're never quite sure you're automatically going to say, nope, can't trust her. These are the heroes of the film. These are the people we should trust, not them. But she does manage, and she does this brilliantly. She manages to get inside your head ever so slightly and be like, hmm, maybe, maybe you're not the bad guy. Maybe you're not this evil organization. Maybe there's some truth to what you're saying. Who knows? Then you have another member of what I'm going to call this government team. 
without giving away too much of the film, you have this assassin. I'll just call him an assassin or a person who acquires targets, acquires assets, what have you. Played by Michael Gray Eyes. Gray Eyes. At least that's how it looks, like the spelling. And this character easily could have been a one-note character. Could have been, oh, I have a job to do. I'm going to follow through on my job. No remorse. I don't care. Nothing's going to change. But he does have an arc. Just like almost all the characters I would say in this movie have an arc. Maybe not one or two. But the ones that you're supposed to care about definitely do. And this is one of the characters that at first you think, oh, I don't care about this guy at all. But then as we get through the movie and as things start to unravel, you start to see, huh, there's more to this guy than I realized. And you start to kind of wonder what's going on. With that being said, let's talk about just the story in general and the feel of it the whole time I was watching this movie there were two things I was thinking about it was x-men maybe even a slightly darker version of x-men meets Carrie now I'm not going to say too much because again I didn't know much about the movie going in and I don't want to spoil stuff for anybody who doesn't know about this movie but needless to say if we focus on the X-Men part of it, it's just the, the abilities, the powers, that idea of a mutation existing in the world. You get that idea from the X-Men and just a place wanting to gather up people like this. But it really leans heavy into the Carrie aspect because I had never watched Carrie until like two years ago, I think. But man, Carrie and Charlie, that would be a girl duo I don't think you'd want to meet because they, they're creepy as heck. They are just so freaky, but there's something about them that just, they're so similar. And that's why I couldn't help but just keep thinking, Oh, this is another version of Carrie, but in a good way. Because just like Carrie was misunderstood, Charlie's misunderstood. And when she lets go, boy, does she let go. And it looks fantastic. It's great moments. There are some things she does that you want her to do because it's a movie. But at the same point, you're like, Oh, wow. She actually went there? They actually did that? Oh, I can't see. I don't think I can condone that. Uh, I don't think I can quite deal with that. But she is freaky. She is scary. She is creepy. But she's just a little girl. Like I said about her performance, you can tell that she's just a little girl and she's scared. And that's what I think is so great about Ryan in this role. And just how she brings it out. Charlie is such a complex character. And I love what they did with this character. And what she was able to do. And it served the story so well. And it moved the story forward. Kept you invested. Yes, you cared about the other characters. But the movie is called Firestarter. Charlie is the one that has the abilities to make fire. In essence, the fire starter. So the movie rides on her shoulders. But, like I said, this movie, the story is good. It's solid. It moves at a pretty good pace. There are moments where it starts to slow down a little bit. And you think, oh, it's going to end here. But it doesn't. That really only happens, I think, at like one spot. And that is pretty close to the end. But story moves along. Great character work. Everybody in this movie definitely shines. And Bloomhouse does it again. They know how 
They know how to give the best performances out of their actors and actresses. They know how to deliver a movie on the big screen. It's just, I know I keep saying the same thing, but that's, it's the truth. This movie is just so good. It really is, as I said, X-Men meets Carrie. It's creepy. It's freaky. It's strange. But it's a good time. And I do kind of, I do wish more people had gone to see it. Because it held my attention. I was interested in it. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about the cinematography. The cinematography was fine. And I get why they used the dinted lights, the dinted cameras, you know, the kind of fading the colors a little bit. I, I wish, I can't remember exactly what the term is. Um, filtered. Like they filtered all the light a little bit. I wasn't a huge fan of that. And I never really am in any movie. Though I get why they did that because it's to create the creepy, unsure mood. It works for this type of film. But I'm not a huge fan of it, but I understand. The music. Oh my gosh, the music is perfect. It's creepy. It's freaky. It's it's scary. It works on so many levels. And when stuff's about to happen, but you can't see it, it does have that idea of like, oh, something's coming was coming is it going to be good is it going to get you is it going to get her what's going on and part of that i think is because of the fact of who was behind the music in this movie it was the same guy it was the same guy who did halloween and of course the name just dropped my name. Oh, Carpenter. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. The name just disappeared. I couldn't remember it. John Carpenter. I think that's what it, who it is. But it's the same guy who did Halloween. I apologize to fans of his. I it, The name just totally slipped my mind. And for all I know, I'm probably saying something wrong. But the music does kind of have a Halloween tone to it. Halloween kind of beats to it. Even so to the point of how the credits at the beginning roll. And then at the end, the way the credits come up, they had that same orange tint that they did with Halloween. So maybe this movie might be Halloween meets X-Men meets Carrie yeah, I think that's it. There might be something else. But it's those three movies. I can see hints of that throughout this entire movie. So what ranking would I give this? Well, I did think about it for a little bit, for a while. I was going to say Civilian. But the more I think about it, and the more I think about the performances, just how well it was executed, I'm going to go with Sidekick. I do think you should see this film. Now, if you don't like suspense and you're not a horror person, stay away. It's not going to be for you because it will be freaky. It's not scary like Friday the 13th or Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street. It's not scary like that. It's suspenseful and creepy. And like I said closest I can come to trying to give you an idea of what this movie is is the idea of Charlie is another version of Carrie that's the easiest way I can describe it again in a good way so yes I would recommend seeing this film personally I would go see it in the theater because I like going to the theater I like the movie going experience however if you do have Peacock it is available on Peacock, so you can watch it at home. 
but I would recommend going to the theater and supporting the movie going business. Regardless, I'd recommend watching this movie. But what do you think? Have you seen this film yet? Or better yet, have you read the book or seen the original film? I'd love to know your thoughts about them. And if you have and you've seen this, give me some ideas about some comparisons. Since I have no idea what the other versions are like, I just know this one. If you've seen the movie, did you like it? Did you not? Why either way? Until next video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And remember... Read what you love, enjoy what you love, and let's all work for a better fandom. I'll see you next time.